While honeybees will collect and store their food in combs, certain species of ants take a different route, using the bodies of some of their fellow ants, often the larger-bodied ants of the colony called majors, to store what they need. Worker ants bring the honey or honeypot ants, things like nectar, water, body fluids, and fats from prey such as caterpillars and termites, to store in case of drought or other times when resources are scarce. Depending on the size of the colony, there may even be thousands of these honeypot ants in a single nest, doing nothing but sitting there and waiting for their stored sustenance to be needed. As the other worker ants bring the liquid foods to the honeypot ants, their gasters, that's the rear portion of the ant, will swell larger and larger until they become so big that they can't move around. This isn't that big of a deal for them, as they also tend to become so big that they wouldn't be able to leave the nest anyways, as the paths out are too small. These honeypot worker ants can even swell as large as a small grape. In order to retrieve food from the honeypot ants, other worker ants will stroke the antennae of the living storage vessels. When this happens, the honeypot ants will regurgitate a little of the sweet liquid that it has stored in its abdomen for that worker to eat or redistribute elsewhere, such as feeding the queen. Given the fact that honeypot ants contain such a rich source of tasty liquids inside themselves, they tend to be sought out by predators, even humans. As such, they usually are stored deep within the nest to protect them. Nevertheless, honey badgers and other such predators will seek out these swollen ants and eat them when they find them. Some Native American tribes, as well as Aborigines, were also known to regularly harvest honeypot ants, biting off the swollen abdomen for a sweet treat. It's also interesting to note that most species of ants actually have the ability to do something similar to honeypot ants, as they have two stomachs, one for their own use and one for storing food for the colony. This second stomach is capable of swelling a bit to hold liquids for transport back to the nest. Once back, they can then regurgitate this liquid for the other ants in the nest to consume. With honeypot ants, however, the storage organ is simply capable of expanding to a much larger volume than what is possible in most other types of ants. And now for some bonus ant facts! Some type of worker ants are designed as soldier ants. These ants collect food like other worker ants, but they are also tasked with attacking enemy colonies, and some species even steal enemy colony eggs, which they then take back to their own colony. Once these enemy eggs hatch, the foreign ants are made into lifelong slaves tasked with specific jobs such as collecting food, building the anthill, taking care of other eggs and young ants, etc. In the most extreme case, Amazon ants are actually unable to take care of themselves without these slave ants. On that note, ants use pheromones to be able to determine by scent what job group some worker ant belongs to at a given time in their life cycle. Worker ants tend to have their jobs assigned based on age, similar to honeybees. In the beginning of its adulthood, worker ants usually help take care of the queen and young ants. After a few days, they are given the job of helping to dig and maintain the nest. As they age, they then graduate to soldiering and foraging tasks, where many end up being killed by predators. And now for another bonus fact. Certain species of ants also have suicide bomber ants. When these suicide bomber ants encounter enemies, such as ants from another colony, they will literally explode, causing a chemical to cover the enemies around them. This chemical is very sticky, and when it dries, it will immobilize the enemy ants, eventually resulting in them dying. And now for another bonus fact. Speaking of suicidal ants, the Ferelius pusillus ant also has worker ants that will sacrifice themselves for the good of the colony, but this time in a slightly different manner than the exploding ants. Every night, the nest of a colony needs to be sealed off in such a way that the nest will be undetectable from the outside in order to protect it from predators. As such, sick ants, or ones who are older, will seemingly volunteer to perform the task of staying outside the nest at night. Once the rest of the ants are all inside, the sacrificial ants will seal up the entrance and usually will end up dying from being left outside. Even when researchers have collected these sacrificial ants and have taken care of them, they will usually die soon afterwards anyway, which is why it's generally thought that they're either older or sick when they're chosen for this task. And now for another bonus fact. Another type of interesting job certain ants have is a gatekeeper. The cylindricus ant has a special worker ant that will flatten its head into a disc-like shape. These ants then use their heads to block the entrance to the nest. If an ant wants in, they must use their antennae to identify themselves, at which point the gatekeeper will allow them to enter. 
And now for another bonus fact. If you've ever been curious how exactly ants find their way around, and why they nearly always walk in a line over the same path as other ants in their colony, it's because foraging worker ants leave pheromone trails that other ants can then follow to the food source and then back home. If for some reason a pheromone trail is lost or weak, similar to bees, some ants also have the ability to communicate with one another how to find an exact location in very complex and abstract ways. Specifically, they'll give a set of directions which varies in method from species to species. The method of direction may include communicating landmarks, distances, and direction, with distance often being measured by number of steps, implying that ants have the ability to count to an arbitrary number and then hold that information in their memory. Some types of ants also have the ability to detect the Earth's magnetic fields to help in navigating and in giving direction. Many also have the ability to navigate by the sun, similar to how bees do it. They communicate these directions via a variety of methods such as pheromones, gestures, and in some types of ants, even using noise produced by their mandibles, essentially, quite literally, talking to one another. Once an ant finds a good food source, they then return to the colony and try to convince other ants to stop whatever they're doing and help them collect food from the food source that they've found. Depending on how convincing the ants that found the food is, other ants may or may not decide to stop what they're doing and go and help collect the food. What's particularly fascinating about this is that the ants seem to have the ability to communicate exactly how much food is available at the food source, which then seems to be factored in by the other ants in terms of determining how many ants are going to divert to that food source, given all the other things there are always to do. And now for another bonus fact. Due to their amazingly efficient worker distribution systems that they use, ants have been and are currently being studied in computer science and mathematics in order to help us humans develop more efficient scheduling algorithms, as well as algorithms to search an area or perform a task as efficiently as possible, given the number of available workers. These types of scheduling problems are incredibly difficult to solve in a reasonable amount of time, even for modern-day supercomputers. As such, algorithms that do this tend to be looking for the best guess rather than the optimal efficiency. Given that there is an amazing amount of money in creating more efficient systems, the amazingly adept ants are studied in terms of how they decide as a group what is the most efficient way to distribute workers given the current state of the environment. One such study done by researchers was to see how the ants would handle solving a version of the Towers of Hanoi math puzzle. The puzzle normally has you move discs from one rod to the next, sorting the discs in a specific way. The puzzle was adapted for the ants such that they were searching for the shortest path. Paths. In the beginning, the ants would have 32,768 possible paths to choose from, with only two paths presenting the optimal solution. The researchers also tried to throw the ants off by periodically adapting the puzzle, offering them new paths. The ants managed to solve this puzzle in under an hour. Once they did, researchers then blocked the path to see how the ants would react. At first, the ants chose to simply modify the original optimal path to get around the obstacle. However, within an hour, they managed to discover the new optimal route and stopped using the old one. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And if you're looking for something else from me, I've got another channel called Biographics where we look at the lives of notable people from history as well as the present day. You can find a link to that on the screen now as well as a video from that channel. Also a link in the description below, of course. And as always, thank you for watching.